Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be installing a uh, Loring Springs, the iBuck Pro Kit, with the uh, a Dynan uh, supplemental bump stocks on this uh, 2015 F30 uh, 335i X-Drive. So there are a couple of good detailed videos out there uh, on the installation process of the Loring Springs on F30. So what I'm going to do in this installation video is that uh, um, I'm going to go as quick as possible through the, some of the common basic steps. Uh, however, I'm going to slow down and go a little bit more in detail in, in some of the uh, issues that I ran into uh, and some of the surprise that I had even after watching those videos. So now here's something to keep in mind, right? This iBuck Pro Kit is uh, meant for the rear-wheel drive of the f 3345 i um, and what I have here is the all-wheel drive, uh, the X-Drive, right? So why go with the rear-wheel drive? Well, um, on the all-wheel drive, iBuck Pro Kit, uh, it says it drops about a 0.8 inches and looking at the pictures, it doesn't even look like it's dropping. Uh, however, the rear wheel drive one will drop about point, uh, 1.2 to 1.5 ish inches and it looks like that's more of an ideal drop for even the X drive. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and install these. Yes, there is always a little risk to install something that's not maybe meant for the version of the car. Um, however, uh, other than the, the drive shaft that they uh, connects the front and rear axles, um, I don't see a huge difference. So we should be okay. So step one, let's remove the wheel. So at this point, now the wheel is off, it's a good idea to uh, put a uh, little jack underneath this assembly to support it so it doesn't you know, come crashing down. So what I'm gonna do now is spray a little bit of WD-40 on the, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the damper. Spray right there where the, the shock is sitting. So it goes in and makes it a little bit of a smoother surface to get out. And now you can take out some of the, and the brake lines, the, the, the damper control lines and all that, um, and sort of uh, uh, push it out of the way. So the, the dampers are tightened down here. With these uh, bolt and nut set. So the bolt takes a uh, 18 millimeter socket, while the nut in the back takes a uh, uh, 16 millimeter. And also, you're gonna take this nut off right here. Now, uh, keep in mind that while this nut is a uh, uh, a 5 8 socket <clears throat> you're gonna need something like a uh, something like this a through hole a wrench set when you are uh, trying to uh, unscrew the nut you need a, a t30 maybe with an extension to go through that and then uh, hold this uh, t30 tight so that being said um, you know I don't have the uh, uh, extension for the the t30 tor uh, torx drive so I just use the uh, the the hex drive that I had. It goes through. It did the job. So at this point, all the bolts and nuts are out of there. Under the hood, remove these uh, the plastic bits to uh, um, uh, gain access to the rest of the uh, uh, the the strut tower bolts. <coughs> uh, to remove these. You got these uh, three, uh, I think, 10 millimeter uh, hex heads. You just uh, rotate it 90 degrees and they snap out. To loosen the upper, uh, uh, the strut tower, um, you're gonna need a uh, uh, 13 millimeter uh, socket to remove this, uh, uh, the, the bolt for the bracing. I'm using a uh, 916. So now that we have the um, uh, the, the front suspension assembly unbolted and loose. Um, we're gonna use this uh, the spindle uh, sp spurter. I got this from a, a Walmart. Um, no, I got it from Amazon. Um, and this is where you place this. You're gonna place it right behind here, behind the damper. And then you're just gonna rotate it about a 90 degrees or so. And it's gonna open this up. And it's gonna make it much easier for the damper to uh, to uh, come out. 
and to bring the damper out at this point you're just gonna you know uh, wiggle it around rotate it back and forth and and, and you know try to push this down as, as as low as possible and slowly but surely it will come out just uh, be patient on that part and believe me eventually it does come out patience it's finally out So the, the key takeaway here is that uh, you do want to play around with the, the placement of this uh, sp uh, spindle splitter. Spreader. See, I, I started out as a little bit lower, and then I, as I started pulling out the, the shock out, um, I started coming a little bit higher, um, and that's what I saw the difference. Um, otherwise, it was just it was just not coming out, you know. And I just you know just keep playing in the placement of the spindle spreader, and uh, it's gonna come out. So at this point we're gonna um, compress the springs with the use of a this uh, spring compressor tool that uh, I rented from a, a uh, the local AutoZone. Um, and then once once the springs compressed, then you can take out this the head. Um, here you also need a uh, this through hole uh, socket wrench, um, and I believe it is a um, 80 millimeter socket head. The reason you need the the through hole is that uh, there is a hex head, a size six, I believe, hex head that is in there. As you can see, you need the 18 millimeter socket, and then plus a, uh, uh, a size six uh, hex head, uh, possibly with an extension, so you can uh, counter rotate them. And when you're putting this on, make sure that uh, um, you know you put the, the plastic pieces in the right way. As you can see, it kind of goes around and it just stops there. There's a stop. In a similar situation on the bottom too. You can rotate it around until it hits the stop on the bottom. So this is the Dynan uh, uh, the bump stock. You can just take these off. I don't think I need them. I'm just gonna use the the cover for the from the stock. They are a bit tight. I'm just putting it all the way down so it's easier for me to fit the rest of the uh, assembly. There's a little lip there that I'm just putting it over that. So I'm pretty sure that's so it keeps the bottom part of this boot down so it's not just moving around with the shock like so now at this point we're gonna um, compress the springs so uh, we can put the, the top hat back on I back lowering springs with the Dynan uh, bump stocks installed and now it's time to uh, put this back on. So uh, uh, putting it back in is actually pretty self-exploratory. Just uh, uh, pay attention to everything uh, when, you, when you try and take it off um, and then just put it back the same way. Um, and also putting it back in is much easier than the um, uh, taking it off as you saw just the shock slide it right in there um, and, and that's about it all right so at this point we have everything put back together the brake lines are back on their place all the bolts and nuts are back on and tight just a quick uh, visual inspection as a must and up top here everything's nice and tight all right so at this point we can just uh, put the wheel back on and lower it and then we'll uh, move on to the the rear tire. 
So here now we are uh, working on the rear. Uh, once the wheel is off, the first thing you want to do is a um, take this uh, plastic piece off, um, so you can have access to these bolts on the other side. Um, these plastic pieces uh, hold together with the four um, 10 millimeter um, uh, uh, nut. All right. So now that the plastic piece is off, you have access to these. Um, bolts and nuts so this one takes a um, 13 16 for the bolt and then uh, for the nut it takes a, uh, uh, a 21 millimeter and also uh, this one takes a uh, uh, 18 millimeter for the uh, a nut and the bolt um, and also when you're taking these off uh, pay attention to the orientation so you put it back the, the same way um, now, uh, because on, in this setup, we are also replacing the, um, the, the factory uh, bump stop with a Dynan. So you're gonna have to take the uh, damper too. For the damper, um, you just take off these three uh, 10 millimeter uh, uh, bolts and uh, it'll, it'll come off. When you're taking these bolts off, I, I put a smaller jack uh, on the bottom. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it releases some of the stress, uh, it's easier to take off the uh, bolts and nuts. And also, you don't want the, the spring to unleash and uh, damage something. Keep in mind that you want to remove the bolts uh, for the damper at the end once you've uh, removed the spring and everything else at this point take these rubber bushings off of the uh, your stock suspension uh, uh, springs and uh, put it on the eye bags now make sure that, as you can see, there's the one way that this actually fits. You make sure that you put it in the right way and it just stops, <coughs> right? That's the top. And then we got the bottom. Bottom, similar situation. You put it on and you rotate it until it stops. And pay attention to this little notch there that's sticking out. That will go towards you when you're installing the um, <coughs> uh, installing this back. So with the shocks, here you see that uh, uh, we have a uh, 5 8 uh, socket there, and also uh, in the center there, um, there is a, a 5 millimeter hex head. <coughs> so you do need the uh, one of those uh, um, through hole uh, uh, socket wrenches. Dynan versus the stock, right? A lot shorter, and you gotta pay attention to this, right? As you see that this this butt, the cover, is a lot shorter, also, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I wanna use the stock, uh, the butt, and I'm just gonna take this off. And last time I wanna try to take this off, it actually broke. So I'm just gonna break this off too. That's okay. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> One little issue I ran into is that. Uh, this little piece that goes on this boot will not just snap onto this, right? So what I, what you have to do is actually bore this out to uh, to be able to uh, put it on. Okay. So as you can see, the the stock boot um, is a fit, right? So what we're gonna have to do is uh, we're gonna have to bore this out. I'm gonna do that with the use of a uh, little grinder here. Just open it up, and it'll be good.
Here we go. So putting everything back is again self-explanatory, just like in the front. Um, you know, put the your damper first on, uh, attach the top of it. You know, uh, screw those. Um, uh, don't tighten them yet, just just to leave them a little, a little bit, a little bit loose, so it gives you a leeway to play around on the bottom. And then you can put the spring on, and then afterwards um, you can start tightening everything up. All right. So at this point, the uh, um, installation process is over. Do a quick uh, visual check. Now let's put the wheel back on. Currently, it doesn't look as low as I want because the springs hasn't settled yet. Um, so I'm gonna give it a couple of days and then I will give you guys an update then. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So about a week passed since the installation and here's the final product behind you. So you be the judge. Here we go. I think it's just the right amount of drop, especially considering that uh, uh, currently it's sitting on uh, stock wheels and in the near future I'm planning on going with the larger diameter wheels and at that point this amount of drop is going to give me that, uh, that room that I need for larger diameter. And also keep in mind that uh, this, uh, these springs are uh, meant for the rear wheel drive version of the F30 BMW and this is an all-wheel drive um, so far I have no issues um, and I think this is the proper drop uh, compared to the all-wheel drive version of the drop which would drop only halfway and I hope that this video was as informative as I planned um, and if you have any questions or concerns uh, please do not hesitate to hit me up in the comments and I try to get back to you as soon as possible and I am planning to do a, a, a video on driving impressions on these springs and bump stocks um, and that should be coming out next week so stay tuned for that.